Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Sovereign Goddess Podcast. Authentic conversations with modern medicine women and goddess penures alike, inspiring you to build your queendom with grace. I'm your host, Sabrina Riccio, and I'm beyond thrilled to share with you this episode on this Capricorn new moon. And as I'm recording it, the moon is about to hit Capricorn. And there's this beautiful quote that I found by Yogi Bhajan, and it says, Capricorn, when all movement comes to an end, an endless becomes endlessness, when the totality of God and the mighty sense of beauty of wisdom enjoys the relationships with the lofty character of firmness. Capricorn is born to glorify the world for his holy firmness. And I feel that is so strong right now. I mean, I've talked about in previous episodes how the more as a collective consciousness we start tapping into this cosmic energy and see it as an opportunity to support us as we go forth and build our kingdoms and queendoms with grace, we are really allowing ourselves to anchor in this energy to really have this miracle mindset shift, right? This like opportunity for us to really just breathe and knowing that we don't have to do it all by ourselves. And I just really want to talk about the power of Capricorn right now. I have a link in the show notes about more about Capricorn new moon and, but I just, there's so many things to talk about. And I think what's super crazy right now is just like, we're seeing Capricorn like all over the place today. We've got Capricorn in our moon, Capricorn in our sun, Capricorn in Mercury, Capricorn in Venus, Capricorn in Saturn, Capricorn in Pluto. So like six places we are seeing Capricorn. This is called a stelium. And it's a super rare alignment that is really like putting it on a silver platter, really, this opportunity to get clear and to really like set the foundation for what it is that we want. So new moons are always an an opportune time to plant the seeds. And so this is like beginning of the year. We're in Capricorn season, still in January. I mean, this is a really powerful month. We started the new year with the full moon and we have a blue moon on the 31st. We've got eclipse season coming up. So the cosmos are just like, yo, we got your back. And I think a lot about... Kundalini yoga, right? Because I've just been really diving in deeper into my practice. And one of the sutras of the golden era is vibrate the cosmos and the cosmos shall clear the path. And so as you work on connecting more with this cosmic energy, they are, this energy is like, hey, we recognize your tenacity, we recognize your awareness, and so let us help you. And we have to really become in vibration with what it is that we want, you know? And so money is a super important topic because, you know, as healers or spiritual workers or just even whatever we do, we need money to be able to afford the self-care, to be able to nourish ourselves, to be able to pay for our house. Money, the topic of money and the issue around money needs to be healed because we can't be in the scarcity mindset. And something that Laura talked about this episode that I just like, oh, I ate it up. She's talking about how we are really creating this new economy. And this new economy is a heart economy where we're using our money to support small business, to support coaches and healers and companies and organizations with strong and beautiful ethos to really change the planet and to really have that nurturing, that divine feminine energy of it. But if we look back at the the opposite side of that, the divine masculine energy is really creating the structures to allow that energy to flow to flow in. And that's what makes this Capricorn new moon so beautiful is that we can really take the time with our intentions if we want to make the money to set up our systems and our operations so that there's structure for that business to flow in. And so it was, I just, one, this is one of my favorite topics. And I had this conversation with Laura back during Scorpio season And, you know, life got in the way and there was other episodes in queue and and having this episode be during this Capricorn new moon, like, you know, there's never, there's no such thing as coincidence, right? There's like perfect alignment as to why all of this is happening. And just to be in that space and to really share this message and to really inspire you to go out there and really take charge of your finances and 
recognizing your worth and all that you are worthy of experiencing in this lifetime is so important. And if you don't know Laura, she's goes by the modern money witch and she really helps mentor activated women that are on their like very unique prosperity paths and she was once in her past life a traditional financial financial advisor and then she became the modern money witch because she really brings a lot of the spiritual and financial rituals to help her clients re- and people who follow her on Instagram or what have you to create prosperous lives and to unleash their own inner witches and you know there's more and more people doing these rituals and these and these tools like yesterday um, my friend Evelyn who goes um, Astrum Council who's also an amazing astrologer she hosted a um, taxes for creatives, what we called it taxes for witches because we're working a lot with the planetary influence with money. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are working with various tools to really, that are always available to us, but to really anchor in and manifest what it is that we want because we know that we don't have to do this on our own anymore. And so I love Laura so much because she's so passionate about helping people heal their relationship with money. And she really brings forth a huge conversation around money and to heal the money, honey stories. So something that she shared was money, honey comes to me with ease times three, like saying that money, honey comes to me with ease times three. Money, honey comes to me with ease times three, allowing that vibration of money to come to you. And it's important to be able to prepare yourself for that money to come in. I mean, that's what I've been sharing about so much lately over on Instagram and here is like a huge part of me has been healing my nervous system so that I can receive energy. And as money is a form of energy is to receive that energy so that it doesn't bring a crazy shock to my nervous system that has held so much trauma and pain from the past. And so This topic and this conversation, of course, has been something that I've been so excited to share with you. And we talk a lot about various topics today. We talk about healing our mindset around money, why money and love are on the same frequency, working with sigils, which are these power symbols to really manifest your desires. Like I said, a new heart economy. And we're talking a lot about this new paradigm shift that's happening and using money with purpose, like having your money be with purpose and allowing it to be in alignment with your divine guidance. So I'm really excited for this episode and I think you're going to love it. And if you do love it, please remember to share your comments on iTunes. We are working very hard to, and by we, I mean I, (laughs) working very hard to share with you a lot more really powerful conversations and opportunities. And it would be a great help for you to just take two minutes of your time to subscribe and share a little comment as to how the podcast is inspiring you. I get so many messages from you guys on Instagram, but it truly helps if we get found through faith, through Instagram. I mean, excuse me, through iTunes, because that's what helps us be found and allows these teachings to go out and to really elevate and uplift the collective consciousness around so many beautiful topics. And for one last thing before I jump in this episode, I just wanted to share if you're in the LA area, I'm excited to announce that on Sunday, I'm doing my first solo speaking engagement. So it's really exciting. I'm really honored to be part of this beautiful event that my friends are putting together. Um, It's all about supporting the Joyful Heart Foundation, and this event is called Together We, and it's about rising up against sexual assault and violence, and I shared a story on my Instagram yesterday on Monday about my history with uh, sexual assault and being harassed as a child and how that's been my journey of healing my sacral chakra, so that's been really beautiful, and to be able to be part of this beautiful event that's really together we rise up against sexual assault and harassment by celebrating the divine feminine. I'm really excited to be sharing a conversation about conscious empowerment and finding equality between the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And you're going to be hearing a lot more of this topic from me because this is truly the topic that really lights me up because 
as I've said before, the future cannot be female. The future has to be male and female. We have to be coming together. There can no longer be separation um, because that is exactly the experience that we've been experiencing now. So learn from your learn from the mistakes of the past and choose again. And so to be talking about the divine masculine and the divine feminine coming together, I'm beyond thrilled. Uh, the link for the ticket will be the tickets will be on the show notes as well. And again, it's uh, coming on Sunday, the 21st, and it's going to be from 2 to 10 p.m. in Los Angeles and Silver Lake. So I'm really excited to be collaborating with my sisters and my family here to have 100% of these proceeds to go to help and support the Joyful Heart Foundation. It just feels really good to give back and to really empower people. And this is a total year of empowerment, and I'm feeling it. And money empowerment, social empowerment, speaking your truth, all of it is coming through and it's just truly a beautiful time to be alive and allow yourself to remember that when there's craziness going on in the world. So thank you for being here. I'm super excited for you to check in and tune into this episode and may there be miracles that happen for you, the shift of perception around money so that we can really use our money as a way to communicate and as a way to vote and a way to make beautiful change in the world. So without further ado, I invite you to this beautiful episode with Laura Rose Duong. And this is Embodying the Sovereign Money Honey Queen. Enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Sovereign Goddess Podcast. Authentic conversations with modern medicine women and goddess penores alike inspiring you to build your queendom with grace okay so laura's here laura's here money witch is here oh Ooh. my god <laughs> <laughs> i'm so thrilled to have laura here because oh god the topic of money has been so strong lately um so before we go any further thank you so much for the work that you are doing sister because being able to shift this conversation and the mindset around money is what is needed more than ever in this new paradigm. So I just really thank you. And as a healer and in someone in the spiritual field, ah, thank you because now we can realize that, you know, healers need to make money too. (laughs) Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you so much for saying that because I mean, it's a hot topic amongst healers, whether or not to be making that money, honey. So, and I know I can press some buttons every once in a while around that topic, but I do it from love. Totally. Because if you have to push those buttons to like wake up people, you know, like if people have been comfortable in in that space, like the ones whose buttons are usually being pushed are the ones that actually need to face it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. You know, I know what you're doing. I see you. I see you. <laughs> so I'm really excited because, you know, we just embarked on Scorpio season right now too. And so much of that is like the unconscious and the subconscious that we have to work through. And I feel that money is something that comes from ancestral pain, like deep ancestral pain. I know for me, I can't like, when my grandmother came, my grandparents came from Italy with nothing, as did a lot of other people here. And mm-hmm. so growing up in a household where it was like, you have to hold on to everything or you have to like believe in the scarcity mindset around money or that there's not enough. And all of these things, they just don't work anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so to be able to be open and vulnerable about money conversations and to start working on our healing our solar plexus and really balancing this, the lower triangle, as we call it in Kundalini yoga, of the root chakra, the sacral chakra and the solar plexus. Those are part of our physical realm that we need to really be careful of and take care of because that is where I know I feel a lot of our money sorrow and stuff comes from. I mean, how, what do you have to, how can you add on or what can you say about that? I just want to loop back to right to the beginning where you were talking about your ancestors. I totally agree with that. And sometimes even, I mean, depends, depends on like what you believe and it could be past life issues coming through too. 
to, to our present time and how we deal with money. I come from an immigrant family too. Like my parents, they came to Canada with nothing and they built a life here for all of us um, as in my family. And um, I w- was very fortunate that though my family came here with nothing, my mom, who I call Mama Honey, always taught me to believe that if I really wanted something, I could, I could have it. Mm. Um, and sometimes it might take sacrifice or just a little bit of patience, but it is going to come around if it's meant to be. Um, whereas like my dad's side of the family, who we sponsored over from Vietnam, they do have a very strong scarcity mindset. So I see them struggling a lot. Um, and it's taken uh, a healthier relationship with my mom and them observing how she's lived her life for them to become more prosperous. You know, and, and a lot of it wasn't really the actions that they were changing. It was just how they were thinking about their lives that really made big shifts. And I, and I, you know, owe that. And I give credit to my mom for teaching all of us that even though she came from the same circumstances as, as they did. And it's, we're not, we are not defined by our circumstances. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's exactly it. Um, She's always told me that like, you get to choose what you want in this lifetime. Like when they were escaping the country, she said to me, um, because they were in a boat and my dad like laid a blanket over her. And she said, you know, when the blanket gets lifted up, I'm either going to be in prison or it's going to be total freedom. (sighs) You know, she's like, she, like, she knew the next time she saw like the night sky, that's what it was going to be. And so she told herself like, I'm prepared for either, but I choose freedom. Uh, Sovereign queen. Yes. Uh, Yes. 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 Queen, dude. Yes. Sovereign queen. Yes. Yes. These are the stories that I'm so passionate to share because it's like, you're, you're hearing stories like that where it is struggle and faith. It is Mm -hmm. pure faith that you, the best will come and patience and faith have been like the two like pillars of my life (laughs) this year. (laughs) Uh, Yes. But how powerful, what a beautiful mother you have, girl, Mm -hmm. blessed. Mm -hmm. And she's carried that mindset throughout her whole life and she passed it on to me too. And she has worked with in Canada, or actually in like Western world as we know her, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking right now. She Kwan was, Yin. Kwan Yin. Yeah. Ah, it's yeah. so funny you say that because when I see you, I see Kwan Yin. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> totally. I was just like, you know, doing research for this and just seeing you and like on your website, like looking at this queen, just like throwing <laughs> cards around and stuff. Like, dude, it's like Quan Yin. <laughs> and she's been such a guide to me lately that it's just like the mercy and the compassion and the love. And mm-hmm. I know you also work a lot with Lakshmi, so much yeah. so that I wore my Lakshmi shirt oh. today to pay respect to the money witch right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But like working with Kuan Yin and having that mindset is what really created so much prosperity in the life that I've had so far, like passed on from my mother and my father. And my father supports everything that she has said around prosperity. It's wild. My mom's just, if she says like, don't do something on a certain day because this is what the goddess tells me, my dad's like, okay. He doesn't question it. He's just like, yes. cool that your mom has that awareness too and is just like so in tune with that, that she has her structure around her intuitive knowing. Oh yeah, Ooh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So I've been very fortunate that though I come from an immigrant family, I had a very powerful, you know, divine woman in my life to show me a different way of living. Yes. Um, and so that's what I'm excited to share with the world and with people that come and hang out with me. What a blessing. I just feel like so blessed right now because, (laughs) you know, that's why we need to start addressing this now because Mm -hmm. for our future generations, we need to work on cultivating a mindset like that to be able to sustain humanity as we know it because 
we need money in order to have self-care. We need money in order to pay for our house. Mm -hmm. We need money. We need money to live a life that, at least in the Western world, there's still things that we need to take care of, especially as healers. We need money to take care of ourselves and to make sure that we're taking the time to do the self-care that we need. The acupunctures or the massage or the little Mm -hmm. getaway vacations that we need because essentially we are, are all hearing the call to step up right now. And to step up, we have to make sure that our cup is full first. So I know that's something you're very passionate about yes. sharing. Absolutely. And money, like money is a form of communication right. in, in our modern times. Um, I, I say this a lot, and I'm just going to bang this from again, but money is how I vote in this world. You know, yes, like there's a ballot that we tick off and we vote for our our leaders in this right. world, um, <laughs> I love that. but like who, but how I think we can truly vote for what we want in this um, new paradigm and in this new heart economy is through our ways of giving money to the world. Yes, you know. So if we want to see, like for me, I want to see more cruelty-free products out there, mm-hmm. cruelty living. So. I funnel all my money towards those type of products. So if the company doesn't have the right ethos, they are not getting my money. Totally. Um, I want to work with amazing healers like yourself and, and some of my amazing sisters. So I funnel my money towards women and, and men like that. Yeah, um, and it's interesting also seeing how money, how, you know, we're, we're, it's going back to small business right now, you know, and I'm seeing like, you know, people like there's more entrepreneurism coming through. And so they're offering more of their, you know, handmade services or, yes. or things like that. And we're like these big box stores, for instance, are having a challenging time because the people are using their money, as you said, to like mm. make change. Like what yes. are they investing in and what are, what are the trends that are happening? And so then maybe these massive companies can start waking up their own ethos and realizing what's actually important. Oh, big time. So it's a beautiful way to communicate with the world. It doesn't have to be, because I know a lot of people view money as something that's cold and evil and something other themselves, something that they don't want in their lives. And then they wonder why their life is struggling so much because they can't make ends meet. But money can be something that is nourishing for our lives. It's a way that we can care and support for the people around us. And that's one of the reasons why I like to call it money, honey. For me, it's noble. It's loving. It's nourishing. It's how I can take care of myself and the people around me. Um, I love it. (laughs) I love that. And this is the quote that you had on your website that I was telling you before we pushed record that like brought me to tears just about. (laughs) I held it together, but I was on, I was on my way. (laughs) And you, and you have, the more you give love to yourself and the world around you, the more love comes back to you. Mm. And you're talking about how money is love. Yeah. I love that. And love is money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can you just elaborate more on that? Well, I really, I don't know how to like substantiate this into like real world plane, but how I feel about it is that money and love run on the same frequency. And so the more that I can share my spirit and my love and my heart with the world, the more that I pour that energy into my work and into my interactions, the more prosperous I become. Like I see I see that love come back to me um, in the form of love, but also in the form of money, honey. You know, my bank accounts grow. I find that when I engage with the world in like the, in like the more traditional patriarchal paradigm, I always felt like really scarce because I was trying to, um, to interface with the world using like, in quotes, like status symbols. Um, but there wasn't any real connection. So there was nothing looping back and me not giving anything to them either. 
So love is money is a way of me saying the more that you can share who you really are and the more that you actually give love in this world, the more process we all become. And a second note to that, it's really important that when I give money to something that I give it with my whole heart. So I don't give money out of obligation. I don't buy gifts out of obligation. I always give if it really is in alignment with my mission and my purpose in my heart. Game changer. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Because then you begin to respect money. And money respects you. And money respects you. Exactly. It's kind of like when you're in a relationship and that's how I see it. I'm in a relationship with money, honey. I'm in a relationship with love. I'm in a relationship with all these energies. And if you're in a relationship with somebody and they come into your life and you just toss them around you don't respect them. You, you don't invite them into your world and share their love with others too. You can get really sicky and gross. Um, but if you have like an ethos of like, this is how I want to live my life and this is how I can honor you in my life. This is how we can share each other and, and grow together. Everyone feels happy. And that person keeps showing up in your life. They're like, yeah, I want to hang out with you. Let's do this. Money Honey is the same way. If you have like a mission statement and you live by it and you share it and you, and you do it really well, Money Honey is like, oh, damn, she knows what she's doing. I'm going to hang out with her more. <laughs> damn, girl, let me get your digits. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to go there. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Well then, yeah. And that's so beautiful because even as we begin to shift our own money mindset, we begin to shift our own mindset about ourselves. Yes. And the way we view ourselves. Because yeah. if we feel that we are worthy of of the abundance and we are worthy of the love, it will come at, come back to us. And this is like a genuine feeling. And you can, it takes practice sometimes if you're like clearing out old karmas and stuff like that. Like to really feel it, you know what yeah. I mean? It's a practice. It's all, it's a, it's a practice just as much as self-care is a practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And like through observation, I've noticed a lot that, that, you know, the people that I work with that have a, a difficult time receiving love, they tend to have issues with receiving gifts and receiving money too. They genuinely, like generally, end up asking for less than what they really require in their lives. Um, so the two really play, play together. I think so. Beautiful. Have you experienced that? So what I'm, in, what I'm hearing right now is because, you know, I'm, I'm in this very interesting space where I'm seeing, you know, we're talking about the healers and the way that they're making money, but it's also this like balance of making sure that healing things like this aren't just for the privilege as mm-hmm. you're working your way up. Yeah. So that's where I am, you know, I'm hearing that like to make things like this more accessible, you know what I mean? Yeah. In areas so that they can like in health, like yoga and all these things, like usually yoga studios are like 15 to $20. And if you're getting like a monthly, you know, you can't like, I mean, you may not be able to afford it right now as you're working on, your money stories, because Mm -hmm. I know you talk a lot about like really emptying out to be able to fill up. And we have a lot of these, like, you know, there, there can be a lot of that, that's that story that's going on in society because like we said before, it can be ancestral or just like your fear of of abundance. Like that's can be a thing. Yes. Big Um, time. Yeah. And it's been to be able to, anchor in the abundance, you have to like be uh, like solid, right? You have to really feel grounded, but then to Mm -hmm. get to that groundedness, we have to like start taking care of ourselves. And so, yeah, so it's just, it's just been very interesting to navigate through right now because I, I, I'm, I'm doing my best to offer, you know, like this podcast for instance is, is something that can be healing for people that is free. Mm -hmm. Like, put we put time and you know and yes. time is money we put a lot of time to produce something like this to help people like 
have that aha or to start making those behavioral shifts and those patterns to be able to raise their own self-worth by starting within themselves to their own self-love and then be able to start seeing that reciprocated to, to them. Yes. So yeah, I don't know. That's what's going through my head so much right now. It's just like working on finding that balance as a healer to mm-hmm. accept what I'm worth monetarily, yes. but yeah. also making sure that it's not part of just the elitist that can oh, afford absolutely. healing. Absolutely. I think it's it, it's like a, a continual conversation you have with yourself and the people that show up to work with you. Mm-hmm. Like At least it is for me. You know, I have the rates that I have that are set. However, I have opportunities for people to work with me at, um, at a different rate, depending on what's going on in their life. But I usually take it as a case by case basis. You know, I meet with the person ahead of time. I have tea with them. We have a conversation to find out, A, are we meant to work together? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe I'm not supposed to be the one that helps you. You're, maybe you're supposed to work with Sabrina. Who knows? We have to have that conversation first. And then if I, if we tap into it and we're like, yeah, you know what? The gate and the door and the bridge is open. The energy field is there for us to work together. Then let's have a conversation around what value is going to be a good enough investment for that person to show up for, to commit to the work, but also a value that makes it so that I can show up and give my whole heart. Um, it's a, It's a beautiful balance, but it can be a conversation with the person. It doesn't have to be an idea that because you have rates over here that you've shut out the entire world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. You can have your rates for the people that can afford it and then have opportunities for people that that need a little bit of help, a Mm -hmm. little bit of a scholarship to work with you. So that way you can take care of yourself and your family and your life. And you don't feel resentful either. Exactly. And because show if, up in full expression. Because if you're feeling resentful, then you're not going to be able to authentically show up as your full self because you are having this like lack mentality or this fear or this like lingering thing. Yeah. And then that can even come through in a service oh, or, big time. you know. Or it's like if you're not making enough and you are out there trying to push your services on people. I'm not saying that you do this, but if it's not, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying if, if it, yeah, if it's like price, if it's not price well enough and you're like, Oh my God, desperately trying to push everything on everyone. They can um, feel that. They can totally feel that. Yes. And then, and then the other thing is if you don't price well enough to take care of yourself, you know, you're in the background squabbling, trying to get by and then showing up all serene, like, yes, I can take care of you. But that doesn't make sense if you can't take care of yourself. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing is having your cup full. Yes. You know what I mean? I know for me, like I took a massive sabbatical from business and everything because I needed to do the work for myself Mm -hmm. and being such, being an indigo and an empath, it's just like feeling everyone else's stuff when I, my cup was not full. It was a very slow take to put the oxygen mask slowly on my head. But it, you know, that was something that I had to do. And even being able, like when you're working on projects or whatever, like being able to make sacrifices, is it a sacrifice or is it like, what's the mindset around it? Are you seeing it as a sacrifice that you can't go to this because you need to take care of yourself? Or are you seeing this as like, this is me taking care of myself. This is not a sacrifice because if I can't show up as myself fully and feeling healthy and vibrant, I am doing a disservice no matter where I go. 100% absolutely. I I completely agree with that. It's you, you are doing a disservice to the people that come to work with you if you're not at full capacity. And ain't nobody got time for that. We have to like show up now and like be yes. present. Yeah. Like fully authentically like being. Yes. I want to also mention another thing is that your not you like not you but general populist you your dharma doesn't necessarily mean that is your way to earn income. You know, for some people, they have their regular job that takes care of business, and then they they fulfill their dharma in another way. 
um, where they don't take an income for that. Yeah, we that's can, like, totally, do, do charity work or, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's totally cool too. If that is your bag and that's what makes you feel fulfilled and balanced, then do that. But then for some people, it's both. Their dharma and their way of earning income is on the same same plane. Mm -hmm. um, and that is okay too. I just wanted to say that out loud because just in case there are people who are listening to this call thinking, well, you know, like I'm... I'm working as a waitress downtown. And I'm actually happy doing that. So what's wrong with that? Do I have to be um, charging for my spiritual practices as well? You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, but if you are not charging because you feel like you're not worth charging for, that's a different conversation. Mm. I think there's like, just needs to be some clarity around that. Yeah, that's why I really wanted to talk about this and really have you on because I, like I said, there's just been so many teachers and people out there that, you know, I'm like, they're giving out a lot and the balance and our own self worth and how, what, what are we okay with? Like, we don't need to be comparing ourselves to what everyone else is doing. Like, yeah. what is resonating with us? Like, being able to cultivate that relationship with yourself on what feels feels enough yeah. <laughs> feels good you know like we can always strive for more yes but like being able to be at peace with where you are and if you're mm -hmm. not at peace like you better start making the changes and start working your butt off to like start being in alignment you know with to be because we are responsible you know we are as sovereign beings we are responsible for our lives and our happiness and what we're going to do. And it's, it's nice to know that, you know, there's people like you here and people like myself and other people that have been on the Sovereign Goddess podcast that are offering so much of their time and their energy to support you as you really go forth. Like you have your, sig your sigils, right? Every, yeah. every week, love those. If you can kind of talk about those and yeah. how we use these power symbols to, really meditate in and anchor in our our affirmations yeah yeah absolutely so i mean in general sigils are powered up magical symbols um that's essentially what they are how i create them is i use i work in alignment with astrology as in what's happening cosmically and taking advantage of those energies or creating a sigil as a prescription to what is happening cosmically and then, so each of the spells are actually mantras you can interweave into your life to support you at this time. And then the sigil itself is a physical representation of that spell. Um, and I work with different planets. Each planet has a magic square, which is their physical manifestation on this plane. And I use that to create it. Um, and how you work with them, so many ways. You know, the one I love a lot obviously because I'm the money witch um, is money honey comes to me times three with ease or money honey comes to me with ease times three. Um, I love that one. Visually. I love it. I love the, the spell behind it as well. So um, basic things you can do, you can take lemon juice and uh, draw them on your doors and your windows to your offices, your businesses. You can draw it on a piece of paper and slide it into your wallet um, you can have it on your altar. If you're really trying to um, embody and integrate these spells into your body, after a shower, draw it on your body with lotion. Anoint yourself in oil with it. There's so many different things you can do. One thing I love to do is to draw it on a piece of paper and um, place it underneath a jar of water on my altar. Activate. Yes. Overnight. Yes. And then drink it in the morning like it's holy water. Oh, Sabrina, the teenage witch right here is loving this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. All the spells. All Perfect. the spells. Perfect. So many, so Scorpio many things. Season. Yeah. And I even, some of my clients will take the sigils and like sneakily put them on their websites you know, near their booking pages or whatever. It's just kind of like a watermark in the background as a way of saying to the universe, you know, right here, this is where I need the energy to live and exist. This is the energy signature of this moment in this place. Sigils are powerful. 
Um, and our thoughts and our minds power them along with the universe, right? We have to live all in alignment with this. I love them. I just think they're beautiful too. My jaws <laughs> just dropped with like joy, like hearing <laughs> this because it's like practices like this, you know, and I think that's also a conversation we need to shift around too. It, like as, uh, you know, as a society is like, oh, you know, there's such a, I mean, it's been awakened, like it's, it's healing now how people are like working more with planets and the moon and like, you know, doing full moon rituals, like ritual is really yeah. like having its like rebirth right now. It feels yeah. like, like people are, I feel like there's so many people just seeking cause they want change. Mm. And, you know, practices like this have been going on for a very long time. So long. So this is like, this is a huge part. I feel like the golden era is all about paying respect to what was, but being able to pave a new road, having that, that the magic and the, the principles and the philosophies of the old that, you know, when we see things that aren't really great for us, we can yeah. go ahead and be like, thank you so much for showing up. Cause now you're showing me what I don't want. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just shifting that mindset so that we are in that mindset of abundance and everything. Like if icky stuff's coming up, like, wow, what a beautiful opportunity for me to love myself more. You know what mm -hmm, I mean? And mm -hmm. I think money is also another one of those things that really falls in that category and like the spell work and all of these things. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm so behind what you're saying. Oh, that makes my insides really, really happy. <laughs> <laughs> We're all about finding the happiness on the insides. Yeah. And so, um, you know, you have like your rich witch experience and you do, you help people make their own sigils. Like what is some of the work that you are doing right now that's really inspiring you? Um, I love creating the sigils for the community at large. Uh, that feels so important to me just to have them out there. Um, mostly because everything I just explained, but also... Um, from a science perspective, images sinks into the subconscious a lot more deeply than just words at times. So each of these sigils, if you, the more you look at them and the more you work with the mantra, that symbol is sinking into your subconscious and making beautiful shifts at a cellular level. That's how I feel about it. So maybe we should um, just get wallpapers of sigils. I'm just kidding. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, <laughs> so I'm really, really excited about that. Um, working with the Rich Witch Coven, that's something that's very, very important to me because it feels like for me, we're getting together as a collective to create collective change. Um, I was talking to the coven about how you know, each and every one of us have influence on the spheres around us. So we come together and heal our, what I call our witch's money wound and our money honey stories and then how we change and act and believe and speak will impact everyone else that we touch. And then that will end up impacting everybody else too. So I really feel like the coven is a beautiful place for us to create change and create a new heart economy. It's so powerful to know that what you're doing on a personal level is impacting on a macro scale. Even if it doesn't feel like it, it really, really is. Yeah, and so I the, love this like heart economy you keep talking about. Yeah, love is money, right? Yeah. So a heart economy, a place where we don't have to, you know, get angry if angry at people, we can have real conversations, we can be vulnerable, we can ask for our value, um, and we can support our communities and vote with our money. Um, where people of all different backgrounds can share their medicine with the world. I mean, some people might think that's idealistic. However, I feel like the economy, the way that it has been for so long, cannot sustain itself. No, this, this is this yeah. is the opportunity for us to make exactly. change. Like it's literally like spirits, like the door is open. Like, what are yeah. you gonna do to shift? You know, now there's more people, like I said earlier, that are entrepreneurs and there's more stay-at-home moms that are working yeah. and you know, doing both. And a lot of like women are, eat, are, eat, are becoming bread makers in some families too. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know? And so it's, that's a huge shift of 
perspective and of being that we've had to, we're blessed to realize, you know, in these recent years compared to how women have been always like just the, the household or cleaner and, yeah. you know, just making sure every all the kids are going, but like women also want to feel as though they are living on a bigger purpose too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's what it is living on a bigger purpose. I feel like is essential when it comes to the heart economy that whatever you're offering to the world, it's coming from that truest place inside of your soul, like remembering why you came here and delivering on that. I think that is our main job as a human is to remember your purpose and why you came here and share it. Because it's it's unique to you. Yes, exactly. And not to have fear. I mean, yes, it can be scary, but not to be afraid to share that because the moment you share that, um, that true mission of yours, you're beautifying the world. Mm. You really are. And then that's when Lakshmi comes and bless you because she's like, you're making this world pretty. And she comes and rewards you for that. And it's amazing. Yeah. Because, you know, as, as you allow yourself to be vulnerable and take the risk of what your heart is saying, even though your logic mind would be like, what's happening sometimes? Because there can be be part of your subconscious mind that is trying to, you know, keep you in a comfort zone, even though it's not really comfortable. Yeah, we call it the comfort zone, but we we're not really comfortable in it. Like if we were comfortable, to me, comfortability is freedom. Yes. Yes. That is true comfort. Yeah. Is being able to be free to express yourself and to be who you really are. Yes, absolutely. I I love it so much. Um, I was just thinking too, the, like the inverse of the, of um, creating and being true from who you are is when it comes to business is creating offerings for the sole sake of making money, honey, you know, I've heard that a lot of people say this before and then I have to f- kind of switch the switch it for them when they're like, oh, you know, I think I should be creating this offering because it's going to make me a lot of money. Um, but we have to start backwards. What does my heart want to say? What am, I, what am I meant to be doing? And then create an offering and then think about, okay, well, what is the value behind this? Um, how can I then how can I make an income? But if you come at it from the other way, it feels really, really gross. And that to me, I feel like is, is um, a symptom of the, of like the old economy. Totally. You know, there's, I just, I've been, there's so much shift happening when with the economy with like the rise of like Bitcoin and, you know, we had like Brexit and, you know, we're seeing, yeah. a, we're seeing a lot of these shifts around the world of, like countries like being bankrupt, like Greece and like, you know, and again, all of it is fertile ground to start coming up with innovative ideas that are not only beneficial for your pocketbook, but are more importantly beneficial for the existence of humanity and the planet. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm Mm -hmm. just, I just keep hearing Mama Gaia being like to the people that are taking the time and are being innovative to come up with solutions for future generations with solar and gas and, you know, water and all of these other things. Like those are the things that I know she brings, she feels very joyful for because this is why we are here. We are here to really, I don't want to say clean up the mess. (laughs) We'll definitely not add to it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but not add to it. We're here to, we're here to, it's like a, like a compost almost, you know what I mean? And to just like generate something new, but still have like that wisdom from the old um, in terms of the things that are really like, the, I, I don't know, I just feel like, I feel like, you know, in the 90s and stuff, like money was all over the place. And then, of course, we've gone through like so much like pain and war and all these things and a lot of places. Um, but even just like inflation and all of that, you know, it's, it's just yeah. so funny because like I, I have my degree in business. So I'm mm-hmm. very like, I like to keep up with like global things too and understand and cute and like see what's happening and then being like, okay, so that's happening. I'm going to like be a hawk and like be observant of it 
but I'm just going to focus on like my corner first, filling up my cup and making sure that I'm there to be of service. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, and the more that we're able to have conversations around money that aren't like scary, mm -hmm. well, they could be mm -hmm. scary because it can be pretty vulnerable. Oh, because it's been, su it's been such a, such a, a marker of status and of worthiness. Yeah. For so, so long, a lot of people in our society has taught us to, to, um, measure our worthiness with how much we have in our bank account. Mm -hmm. And that's ridiculous. Yeah. I think our, our worthiness is inherent. Yes. And like when you go to developing countries and they have nothing where it's like three families living in one house and they're happy. Yeah. It's like, you know, but they have that joy. And for them, it's their money, their needs are met. Yes. You know what I mean? So I think it, it comes down to having really honest conversations with, with yourself, with the people around you, around what do you actually require in your life? Mm -hmm. You know, what is your baseline? Like, what are the experiences that that make up your life? The one that is content and free and mm -hmm. spacious and loving. What are those experiences? You know, they don't, I mean, for the people that want this, nothing wrong with it because I want it too one day. But it doesn't mean you have to be flying around in a jet around the world every single day you know, popping champagne bottles to be living a fulfilled life. Sometimes it can be as simple as, you know, having a delicious home cooked meal with your lover and your pet beside you, observing those moments and realizing that those are the moments that really fill and make up your life. Because so often we're paper chasing, you can kind of forget all the everyday moments that make up your life. Mm -hmm. And that's sad to me. Mm -hmm. to not recognize those moments. Yeah, because that's part of the balance too. You know what I mean? It's like, yes, we need, you know, we can we it's totally cool for us to want money. It's totally yeah. fine with that. Yeah. But what are you doing with it? Like are you doing it using that just to show status or mm -hmm. are you doing it for social good? Like and you're yeah. talking about this hard economy too and I know yes. like I'm I'm focusing a lot on giving back to brands that are doing sustainable or helping charity. That yeah. is part of a whole new economy too. I just yes. feel like more companies like startups and things like that are very, their ethos is yeah. solid. Yes, absolutely. And so I just terms, wanted to go back around to that because you were talking oh, about that earlier. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. And knowing that like all the money that comes in, it's totally 100% okay to be like, I am calling in a million dollars, but know exactly why you're doing it. If mm -hmm. there is no... Um, like reason and no true purpose, it's unlikely the money will arrive. But if you're very clear, you know, that in my hands, this is the life that this $1 million is going to live. I'm going to be able to help these people over here, donate to this charity, um, experience this life over here, et cetera, et cetera. It's more likely the money will come in at that point because there is purpose. Everyone wants purpose and a reason to exist. And that also allows you to pay reverence for money. Yeah. And respect money. Yeah. And and for me, I see this maybe where it gets a little bit hot topic like, but for me all I all about find the hot topic like all about it. <laughs> Excellent. I feel like money, honey, is for me like a gift from my divine team. It's a, it's usually a way for me to know that I'm doing the right thing. And I know a lot of people don't see it that way. They just see it as like money in, money out, money in, money out. But I like to live by my guidance. And sometimes the way that I know that I am following that guidance is because money, honey is flowing in. Gosh, yes. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful because, you know, like, more, like during these times we need to start calling in from help from our guides and things like that too. Yes. Like our needs will be taken care of and there's a lot of people shifting their careers and yeah. You know, so that's why some of that mentality is that like scarcity and that lack mentality is coming through because it can easily come from like Lisa, the ancestral and yeah. being able to realize that like your needs will be met. Like, but living on purpose is just, it's all. And so for that reason, when money honey does come into my life, I go to my altar, whether it's my physical one or the one inside of my body and my mind. 
and thank Lakshmi and my divine team for always providing for me. So it's not about me being some hot shot, making that cash money every day. It's, it's me being like, thank you so much humble, for humble. Yeah, humble. Yes. Thank you for providing for me and my family and my loved ones so that we can continue another day. You know, it's not about like thousands and thousands of dollars, like dropping in every day. It's like, or even just finding $10, regardless of the, the numeric value. I am always and equally as excited and grateful for it because it just lets me know that whenever I am in need, it, it comes. And that, and that being humble is part of that heart centered yes. economy. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, because it makes you grounded in a, a, the bubble of like your balloon of your head can <laughs> pop, you know, it's like, no, it's come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're all human. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, okay. So before we end, I do have a few like power questions. Like, okay. That I want to ask. <sighs> Let's do okay. this. Okay. Yeah. So who would you say, what would you say has been a guiding spirit animal for you lately? Ooh, lately. I'm going to say the panda. Mm, what about the panda? I love pandas because they, well, they're soft and cuddly, um, but they're also so strong. And, um, and they like to roll a lot. And whenever I see the rolling, it, it reminds me to just roll with it. And they've come that. to me in meditation too. Um, so I know if I'm like, if I start like getting too busy and not taking care of myself, a panda will come and remind me to like mm. chill out and play and just roll a little bit. I'm so happy you said that. My best friend in the entire world, his favorite animals were pandas too. And so he had like pandas all over the place. So we love pandas. So hopefully he's listening to this episode and like just awesome. give him that love because I love pandas. That was great. <laughs> Thank you for that little nudge. Um, who other than Lakshmi and Kuan Yin, what other gods or goddesses or ascendant masters have you feel like have been guiding you a lot recently? Oh my gosh. Um, so many come through. But I think recently... Um, one that comes a lot would be Kalima. Mm. I mean, she's always there ready to kick me <laughs> Yeah, in, in the best way possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the best way possible. Um, I, I really, really adore her energy and she makes it so that kind of like what you're talking about, the, the compost, she makes me feel safe to hand over my stuff. Um, you know, if I'm going through something and I feel like, oh, I got to hang on to this and like really just drag myself through the crap. She's kind of like, no, just hand it over. Like, you don't have to like wallow in this all day long, every day, just hand it over and then, and learn from it and then move on. Um, so Kali Ma for sure is always, always there. Yes. Yeah. Queen. I love her so much. I love and her she's too. been she's been so strong. I think just I mean this month I've just been yeah. feeling her presence a lot. Yeah. And um, I just oh sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. And I also wanted to add to the other other like spirit that's very present for me is Mary Magdalene. Oh the last, yes. Yeah. The priestess is so strong right now. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I just see her everywhere and I hear her like wanting us to learn more about her the real her honoring mm -hmm. her honoring her within our own lives and her teachings you know is basically what i'm in love with move with love just allow yourself to be love and give love and then you will be rewarded i i feel i feel that to to my bones yeah oh, yes those are like those two are for sure it's hard to like hierarchy. Like these are my top five. It's like, cause they're all so good <laughs> I know. for different reasons and different seasons. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. So what would you say would be like a mantra that you're really working with right now? Cause you're making all these sigils and stuff. What is a mantra that has been really helping you out lately or supporting Ooh. you lately? This one is not mine. Okay, it's from the one. moon deck. Mm. Have you worked with the moon deck? I don't have that moon deck. I have like 50 other decks, but okay. I do not have the moon deck. <laughs> so I'm fully um, aware of the moon deck. Yeah. So I love the moon deck. And the one affirmation that I've been working with a lot from that one is, and I hope I get this right, is 
I free myself of critical thoughts of my body and my worth. I think that's what it is. Yeah, I free myself from critical thoughts of my body and my worth. So I've been working with that one for quite a while. That's um, powerful. So I'll I'll even under the full moon, um, again, jar of water. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like I'll hold it in my hands and um, and chant that mantra and really allow myself to feel the truth of that, and I'll leave that jar of water under the full moon to charge with that mantra, and I'll drink it throughout the throughout the moon cycle. Um, cause I think that's so important uh, in the book, the power of the witch by, I hope I say her name, right? I want to say it's Lori Cabot, C-A-B-O-T or Laura. Ooh, it, but it's called the power of the witch. Um, she but, feels us. Yeah, she feels us big time, <laughs> but she talks about before you even start doing spell work, what's really important is really understanding owning and nurturing your worthiness like knowing that it's inherent letting it live in your body because ultimately when it comes to manifesting and living a good life we are the vehicles it is our beautiful energy that drives all of that so if we don't like you said have a full cup and foster that beautiful worthiness that is yours to have then a lot of what you do may fall a little bit flat so that affirmation really helps me move beyond um, the doubts and struggles that I have, you know, so, cause that I have is, them, I'm human. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing, you know, I want people to realize like when they like hear these conversations or, you know, follow us or whatever, like yeah. we're humans, we can go through our own stuff too. Oh, you big know? time. Yeah. Like if yeah. they're just always showing you like the highlights, like don't believe them. <laughs> <laughs> Big time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's love, a, there's a, there's that shadow there. Big time. Yeah. I mean, I love shadow and you know, like our homegirl, Claire Porter, she's like all about the shadow work. Yes. Like, oh, that's my girl. Yeah. She's the one that was actually like nominated you. She was like, you need to look, you need to have Laura on your, on your podcast. And I, was oh, like, I love her so much. I love her with all my heart. And I was like, oh, duh. I've been like following like her forever. <laughs> so like, again, thanks for being here. Um, but yeah, it's just like really embracing that shadow because there's, there could be a money shadow that can be, that's part of the ancestral or this, this oh, lack of self-worth and all of that. I mean, for coming from my from my background, because I'm mostly Vietnamese and a hodgepodge of some other things, but in in Asia there is this really strange race hierarchy. Um, I don't know if you know that in the land of the Orient, but I know like it's a lot about like color. Like that's why they do like bleaching the skin yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. But literally where you're from will dictate if they consider you to be an aristocrat or a servant. Wow. So ancestrally speaking, because I'm mostly Vietnamese, I'm considered a servant. I had a friend before who was Chinese and she said to me, I'm really glad my grandma's not alive. And I thought that's a very strange thing to say. And I asked her why. And she said, well, because if she was alive, she wouldn't approve of us being friends because she'd wonder why I'm friends with a servant. Wow. Yeah. And I thought, wow, thanks for coming out, friend. Um, I'm not a servant. I don't feel that way. But it's apparently in my ancestral line. So if I gave into that belief, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. No way. And yeah. then and you can still be a servant, but in a new what in, in a, a totally new, new way. Yeah. yeah where not in the way not, that she's talking about it. Yeah. yeah. But how beautiful is it that you can shift that perception right away and like kind of like biohack the ancestral yes. like yeah. <laughs> belief of hierarchy, you know? Yeah. And I could easily sit here and go, wow, like I'm not white, so I'm not gonna be successful in my business or not as successful as a white person. I could say that. But I don't, I don't believe that I could say, you know, wow, I'm a little bit overweight. So people aren't going to take me seriously. I could say all those things too. And I do have those moments, but then I check myself and go, wait a second. I have the right to be here. 
I was born here and I wouldn't be here right now sitting in front of you unless it wasn't, unless it wasn't meant to be. This yes. moment right here was designed. So I have the right to be here. Just like anybody else out there that wants to do something. I don't care about what society dictates as amazing and wonderful. Like you are inherently worthy. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me as I step off my soapbox. <laughs> and she flicks her hair back. <laughs> she flicks her hair back. Yes. Uh, because, and then I want to go back to these questions. This is just too good right now. Okay. Okay. So the self-worth too, a lot of that is developed in our solar plexus chakra, which is around the times we're in high school. Yeah. Where, like our hormones are racing and all of those things. And like, you know, there's these peer pressures from like other kids that can be becoming a little more older and becoming a little more conscious of what's happening in the homes and things like that. And then hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So going to that shadow of who we were as teenagers and things like that to also rewrite this, the script, you know? Yes, absolutely. Being able to be able to face like who you were as a child and give her that love, you know, mm -hmm. that, that she's been yearning for because the past, the present and future are always here with us. Yes. You know what I mean? We are paving the road yeah. every day based on what we still believe from the past and yeah. what we are, we are believing and going after in the future. Yeah. So I just really yeah. wanted to throw that out there that you Absolutely. have, and you can change your perception on self-worth with a single aha moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be like you said, giving as simple as giving space to that person that you were like giving space for that person to be heard. Sometimes it's as simple as going back and going, okay, like you in that moment, I hear you. I'm going to give you space today. What can I do for you today to be seen and heard and live mm. for her for today? That can change so much. So what would you say to younger Laura Rose right now? Oh my goodness. I think the first thing I thought was it gets better which is so cheesy, but also <laughs> props, yeah, but, but also it's props true. to, yeah, also props to, to little LR because I remember when you, when you brought up high school, the first thing I thought of was my mantra back then was when you're getting flack, you're on the right track. <laughs> I don't even know why I thought that, but I, you know, that's why yeah. I just saw, I'm like, you know, if people are getting hard on me or, or making fun of me or whatever, it just means I'm on the right track. That's what I stuff. told myself to get through the mayhem of high yeah. school. Yeah. But that is so part of the self-worth that we can still really hold on to. Big time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So, um, one, okay. I have two last questions. Okay. okay. The, sec the one, first question is, um, what single like thing, like what nugget would you leave this episode for everyone? You know, cause I feel like we kind of like, we, we, we like cleaned up a lot of stuff. So <laughs> what would you say would be like a really strong, um, like encouraging. Okay. Encouraging. Awesome. Um, I think the thing that came through right now is is it, it that it's really important that everybody remembers that you are a sacred container. You are a vessel. You, your body, this human form is an altar. So treat it as such. Um, you know, do to your, your body what you would do to an altar. Keep it clean. Bring loving thoughts to that place. Honor it. Bestow offerings on this body. Um, decorate it in a way that that makes you feel exalted all of these things are a way to unweave any of those unworthiness stories in your body you have the right to bless yourself take care of yourself love yourself and it's not because we're trying to get cheesy here it's literally because when you do this for yourself you allow who you really are to shine. And that's what the world needs right now. We, we all need to stand up and light, let our beautiful light vibrate into the world. Um, there is so much darkness out there between the race wars, um, gender wars, 
strange presidents in the world, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. You know, like it's really important that we take the time to realize, yes, I am an altar. I can make an impact and I am, I am worthy of all of these things. Cause I feel like a lot of the times people say to me, I'll say, Oh, like, Hey babe, like you should book yourself a massage. And they'll say to me like, Oh, I don't have time for that. Or I don't do that for myself. Well, it's time. It's time for you to start doing that for yourself. Whatever yourself needs, you got to be there for you. I think that's so fundamental. And as you start to respect yourself at that level, the world will respect you at that level. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That self-respect, it gets the respect Mm -hmm. coming to you. Yes. Okay, perfect. So now, where can we find you? What are what are your programs that you're launch, that you're working through right now? How do we get more of the money, honey, goddess <laughs> herself? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Laura Rose Duong. If you want to interact with me, one of my free offerings is the Rich Witch Circle with LRD on Facebook, so you can search it and. Um, I have some questions on there and if, if everything goes well, then I'll add you to the group because it's a sacred space and I'll make sure that everyone comes in there, has like an open heart, a curious mind and is there to love and be seen and be heard. Um, one of my main offerings that, that's coming out soon is I'm going to be opening the doors to the Rich Witch Coven again to invite some new sisters into the space. And I love working with people one-on-one. So head to my website, check out my offerings and I do have one-on-one sessions and I'd love to work with you in whatever capacity. Like my main mantra right now is wealth in all corners of your life. So sometimes people show up and we don't even talk about money, honey. We talk about their love life or their health or, or whatever it is because it all plays into to your money story. It's all a holistic relationship Bing. with a W. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I felt like this conversation covered so many like powerful topics that are really current and, and deep, ancestral deep. And to me, it felt like they've whole rounded. So I'm just super grateful (laughs) that you're here. And we just, we just want you to stop being and living in that scarcity mentality because it's part of an old story that isn't serving you or anyone else anymore. Yeah. That keeps you down. It keeps you down. And we are here to live an elevated life. We are here to stay woke. We are here to be awake and aware with that. This is why we came here right now is to really show up like authentically be who we are and to embrace all of our quirks and who we are and our needs will be met as we allow ourselves to be who we are and believe in ourselves and have big dreams. Mm-hmm. Yes. Aho. Aho. So thank you everyone for tuning into this episode. I mean, yeah, for sure. It feels like Macaulay Culkin over here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. So fun. Thank thank you you. so much. Thank you so much for being here. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. And thanks for listening to the Sovereign Goddess podcast. There's so many more juicy episodes coming up. And I'm very excited to see how you working with Laura and tapping into the magic that she shares and how it's shifting your life. So thanks, everyone. And we'll be seeing you next time. Bye.